Have you ever heard of a plane that disappeared without a trace? In the annals of aviation history, one tale stands out. The enigmatic case of a Boeing 727 aircraft that seemingly vanished into thin air in 2003. Let's unravel this intriguing tale. On a seemingly ordinary day, the 25th of May 2003, at Quattro de Fevereiro Airport in Luanda, Angola, an unpainted Boeing 727-223 was resting. This aircraft, manufactured back in 1975, had served American Airlines for a quarter of a century and had been idle in Angola for 14 months. Here, its new owner, Aerospace Sales and Leasing, was converting the plane for IRS Airlines. With its silver body and a patriotic red, white and blue stripe on the side, the plane was preparing for a new life transporting diesel fuel to diamond mines. As the sun began to set, two men, Ben Padilla, an American pilot and flight engineer, and John Mutanta, a mechanic from the Republic of Congo, boarded the plane. Despite working with an Angolan mechanic on the project, neither man had the accreditation to fly the aircraft, which required three aircrew. Equally mysterious was the 14 gallons of fuel in the plane, a substantial amount for a plane not scheduled for flight, offering a potential flying distance of 1,500 miles, Without any form of communication or notification, the men started the aircraft, began taxiing it, and, to the astonishment of the control tower, took off. The control tower officers spotted the plane, despite its lights being off and the transponder being deactivated. They attempted to make radio contact with the cockpit, but their attempts fell on deaf ears. With its lights off and no response from the cockpit, the aircraft manoeuvred erratically toward a runway, and, without any clearance, ascended into the skies, heading southwest over the Atlantic Ocean. A month later, in July 2003, an alleged sighting of the aircraft was reported in Conakry, Guinea. However, the United States Department of State confirmed this to be an error. To this day, neither the plane nor the two men have been found. Their fate remains one of the most compelling mysteries in aviation history. So, in the end, who stole the Boeing 727 and why? The answer remains as elusive as the aircraft itself. As of 2024, the plane and its two occupants remain missing, leaving behind only questions and a sense of intrigue that continues to captivate the world. A huge search and rescue operation was initiated by the FBI and the CIA, but all efforts found nothing. If the plane had crashed, you would have expected somebody to have spotted it or somebody finding the wreckage which led to further investigation. There are an array of theories as to why the plane was taken, so we'll take a dive into some of them. The family of Ben Padilla had drawn the conclusion that he was flying the aircraft, but under duress, insinuating he had been taken against his will in order to steal the plane for his kidnapper, and that the plane may have also crashed somewhere over Africa. Some believe that they only saw one man board the plane, whilst others distinctively remember seeing two men board. Having searched many countries for the plane, diplomats stationed in Nigeria conducted a search of many airports, but could still not find the missing plane. The aerospace sales and leasing president Maury Joseph had inspected the aircraft two weeks before it disappeared, and agreed with the thoughts of Ben Padilla's sister Benita Padilla Kirkland, that the plane was likely in pieces in a field somewhere in Africa, or that Ben had been forced to steal the plane for resale. But Maury Joseph had a history of accounting fraud, which led to speculation that the plane may have been taken as part of a business feud or even a scam. And finally, this theory is one of the most credible that holds real substance. Keith Irwin, a 57-year-old South African entrepreneur, purchased the aircraft in Miami in February 2002 for his joint venture company named Cargo Air Transport Systems and was commented to be in beautiful condition. He had agreed to purchase the plane for $1 million after he landed a contract to transport fuel to diamond mines in Angola. As due to the civil war, the roads had no longer become a via option for transport. Keith made an agreement with none other than aerospace sales and leasing president Maury Joseph to put down a $125,000 deposit with the condition that the remaining balance was paid within 30 days and was still able to fly the plane within this period. Unfortunately, Keith experienced issues with landing permits, not just crippling him financially with wages to pay workers for sitting around waiting to fly and work, but also meaning the plane was stuck in Quattro de Fevereiro International Airport, as he could not store it at other airports without the correct paperwork, placing the diamond mine's fuel on hold. 
With the 30 days now up, Keith had defaulted on his promise to pay for the remainder of the aircraft. Being out of US jurisdiction, it would be difficult for Maury Joseph to repossess the plane, and even if it was retrieved, could not be resold, as it would have illegally been stolen. It is alleged that Maury hired Ben, waited until dark, switched off the transponder and lights, then stole the plane back, in order to strip it and sell for parts. However, as Ben was never heard from again, it is also suspected that it either crashed due to a malfunction, or was sent down to prove a point. Do you have a theory on this? If so, I would love to hear it.